Chemotherapy it just means medications or drugs that we're using to treat cancer. The drugs go through your bloodstream, they affect the cancer more than the rest of your body because the chemotherapy drugs affect rapidly dividing cells and the cancer cells are dividing quicker than the other cells in your body. I found a breast lump. We have a family history of breast cancer so I didn't really waste a lot of time. I had seven cycles of chemotherapy altogether. The doctor will go through your personal history to make sure that chemotherapy is appropriate for you and that we can tailor the chemotherapy to your individual situation. We will then explain the details to you of the chemotherapy we want to give and if you're in agreement then to sign some paperwork to say that we have your consent to proceed with that treatment and make all the necessary arrangements. He explained to me about the, the chemo regime that he was thinking of for me. He gave me the names of the drugs and where I could find information to have a little read through um, about the side effects and everything to do with those particular drugs. In terms of getting ready for chemotherapy, the first thing I would recommend is simply clearing your diary. Um, most people will be, um, will be slightly more unreliable than usual, perhaps they might feel fatigued and tired. We usually recommend a dental checkout for patients to ensure that their teeth are in good order. We'd also recommend you to see your GP to get your vaccines up to date, so for example your flu vaccination. Please do tell your doctor and your pharmacist about any medications that you're taking as they might interact with the chemotherapy that we want to give you. Quite often I'm recommending six sessions of chemotherapy given intravenously at three weekly intervals, but it does differ from patient to patient. We're here to be as friendly as possible, to be as supportive as possible, to make the process as tolerable as possible. No question is a silly question and we will do it together. There are things you can do to prepare yourself really 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 make sure that you keep yourself hydrated throughout it's, I cannot stress that enough and I am saying that from experience there are times where I definitely didn't drink enough and it did make me feel worse and get some things that will keep you occupied as well so I found colouring books really helped I actually feel that maybe I didn't give chemotherapy the respect that it deserves at first when you're in that position your desire to live overcomes any fear that you could possibly have and nothing else matters you just you just do it it was just okay I'm, I'm having treatment this is good you come for a, an assessment to see an oncologist we will get your height and your weight or measure those when you come that's because we use those to calculate the dose of your chemotherapy for any woman who is of childbearing age we need to do a pregnancy test before your chemotherapy starts to make sure you are not pregnant even if you think it's an incredibly remote possibility and you're not going to be pregnant. I hope you understand that we still must do a pregnancy test. A cycle of chemotherapy is normally about 21 days long. Patients will come into the day treatment unit and have intravenous drugs, chemotherapy, on day one of the cycle. They'll give, then be given additional medications to go home with for a few days after the chemotherapy. Um, then 21 days later and the next chemotherapy start cycle starts again. The receptionist will book you in, she'll give you a wristband, we'll usually do a wait first, take you into the treatment room and then we would sit down and the first thing we would look at is access. The type of access we use depends on the type of treatment that the consultant has decided that is appropriate. You may have a cannula inserted, which will be removed at the end of that day, or you might have a PIC line uh, inserted, which is a line that stays in for the entirety of your treatment. So she put the local anaesthetic in, and it, I won't lie, it does sting, but it's fine, it passes. Um, and then after that, I could feel just a lot of pushing around, but I couldn't see what they were doing, so it actually made it a whole lot better it wasn't painful at all and the line actually travels all the way up and it, then it sits about here in your chest the pick line does need to be looked at once a week you don't need to do anything specifically for the pick line we will make sure that a specially trained nurse is available to look after your line and to look at it once a week and what they will do is that they will flush the line with some sterile water and replace the dressing. We do blood tests before each session of chemotherapy to check whether your white blood cells 
have come up enough to do the chemotherapy. A chemotherapy pharmacist would come and see you on the day treatment unit when you start your chemotherapy cycle to discuss with you any additional medications that we can give you to support you through your chemotherapy. We'll then come and see you at the first day of each subsequent cycle to see how you got on last time. Um, we can advise any changes if you've had any problems and make adjustments to your regime. Once they've connected it to the line, you might feel, sometimes you can feel that it's a little bit cold and you can feel a cold feeling traveling up but it doesn't hurt and once the bags attached you, you can't feel a thing and then you just sit and have a chat have some tea biscuits there's always loads of biscuits on the unit strangely it's actually quite a nice environment because you're you've got your comfy armchair and quite often you're sat next to somebody else who's obviously also going through chemotherapy so you just get chatting away and it's usually relatives as well, you, there's always loads of relatives around and they want to know your story and you hear theirs and, and it's just a, it's a nice environment, it is because everybody is there for the same reason and so you can have a little moan if you want to and, and they, they just get it, you know, so it's nice. We've got Wi-Fi in the department, so you can bring your uh, bring music in. Some people bring in the you know DVDs. They watch a bit of Netflix, or people read books. People sit in there and crochet. Most people tend to bring someone with them. You don't have to, but it gives you the opportunity to pass the time chatting to a friend or relative. Anything that crops up, any flushing, any breathlessness, uh, any dizziness. Um, any, any rashes that you might have noticed, anything like that at all, let the nurse know by pressing your buzzer and we can then come, we can assess you and then we can move on from there. The medication that you are given by the pharmacist to take at home before you come in or the day before you come in uh, is designed to anticipate that and hopefully in a lot of cases prevent it. We'll give you a medication record chart, so this will tell you how to take your tablets or injections or any other medication that we give to you. If you have had any problems, for example, with nausea or vomiting, we can then look at your chart and review that and make changes to make it more comfortable for the next cycle. The chemotherapy would run for about two to three hours. Um, and then you'd normally, I would normally be here for maybe four or five hours altogether. When the treatment is finished, one of the nurses will come over, they'll literally just disconnect the line from, from your PIC line and then they flush it through with just some, some water just to make sure that the drug's gone through and that also your line stays nice and clear so it doesn't get blocked. Then that's it, you're, you're free to go home after that. I didn't drive myself to treatment just because I would usually find that I was quite tired afterwards. In terms of measuring the effectiveness of the chemotherapy, if you are having preoperative chemotherapy, then the doctor will be monitoring the size of the breast cancer. If you're having chemotherapy after removal of the breast cancer, then there is no cancer left to monitor. I would get to a, a point in every single cycle where I would say no. I'm, I'm not having any more, I'm fed up, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tired, I'm not having any more. That would then pass really quickly and then I'd say okay, fine, I'll have the next one. And every time I came in to see my consultant, I'd always say, if you'd asked me last week, I would have told you I'm not having any more. And he'd always say, well it's a good job I'm asking you this week then. <laughs> Chemotherapy side effects um, are highly variable. Even if a side effect is judged to be common, which is usually over one person in 10, the majority of patients won't experience it. The commonest side effects of chemotherapy are fatigue, lethargy, mild nausea, although that's usually manageable, and a small risk of infection. We do have things nowadays that we didn't have in years gone by, like we've got very effective anti-nausea medications to prevent you getting nauseated in the first place. You will get a whole array of different drugs to help with the side effects. Take them as they're prescribed because they do help, they really do. One of the things that I really struggled with was fatigue. I would notice I'd have chemotherapy and then usually for anything up to about 10 days after having chemotherapy, I would be really, really lethargic. You will feel yourself pick up gradually over the, the next few days. I did have a lot of nausea, but fortunately I was only ever sick once throughout the whole five and a half months. I had injections that I had to take. Um, 
to boost my white blood cells and to help with my immune system. You do them yourself at home. Um, they're really easy to do. Actually doing it is, is not bad at all. But I found that if I took it out of the fridge half an hour before I did it, it stings a little bit less because it's not so cold. With many of the chemotherapy drugs that we give, people will lose their hair, unfortunately. People usually don't lose their hair straight away. I would expect that you would lose your hair after several weeks after the chemotherapy has started. I wasn't particularly worried about losing my hair, which really surprised me because I thought I would, but I wasn't. One of the things that they don't always tell you when you lose your hair is when it starts to fall out, your head becomes so sore. And I found I had a really sore head to the point where sometimes it was actually quite uncomfortable to lay it on the pillow. So I'd have really soft blankets on top of my pillow just to make it comfortable. And it actually got to the point where my head was so sore that I made the decision to just wet shave my head completely. And I did that and it was bliss. After that, it was absolutely fine. Um, so much more comfortable. Um, and I most of the time wore headscarves. I did have a few wigs as well that I wore. Um, but after a while, I just chose not to wear them anymore. And it, it was quite empowering actually to walk around with, with nothing on my head. The vast majority of patients will get return of their hair after chemotherapy. Usually that starts within four to six weeks of the last dose of chemotherapy. I did have to go to A&E once um, when my temperature went up because you do have to check your temperature quite regularly. Um, and if it goes up, then you need to call the triage line. If you happen to pick up an infection at the same time as having a low white blood cell count, that can be very dangerous. We call that situation neutropenic sepsis. And it's a situation where we'd want to give you intravenous antibiotics straight away. So we need you to be very alert for any temperatures, any fever of 37.5 degrees C or more, and we want you to contact us as soon as you get a fever. If it is two in the morning, we want you to ring us at two in the morning. You do have to be aware that you are more susceptible to infection. And then it's just about being sensible, you know, if you've got somebody coming to see you or you're going to see somebody and you know that they've got a cold or they've been poorly recently, then it's probably not the wisest idea for them to see you or for you to go and see them. Mentally, I didn't necessarily process until after I had finished chemo. I don't think I quite realised how poorly I was with it until afterwards. It's not until you look back and think, wow, actually I was quite poorly. The, the side effects do build up and you do become, I definitely became more tired with each cycle that I had. And I think that does, that does have an effect on, on you mentally. That said, the more you progress through treatment, you can see that, that end in sight and you think, okay, actually, I can, I can do it. I, I know I can, I've already done X amount of cycles. And when you, once your cells have built back up again and you've got that little bit of energy back, then you kind of give yourself like a little mental boost and you're like, okay, fine, it's only X amount to go, I can do it. If you can get out and go for walks, really, really good. It will do you your mental health wonders just to get out and do something, even if it's just, you know, go for a coffee with a friend or just go for a little walk, it, it really helps. Every so often I would make a point of making sure that I got up and I got dressed and I put my makeup on and I put a wig on and even if I wasn't going anywhere, just knowing that I looked a bit better made me feel better. Overall, most people report being back to normal at around about a year post the treatment. The experience and the recovery is very, very variable. Generally speaking, the weller you are or the fitter you are before you start, the quicker the recovery, but there is some considerable variation between individual patients. Nobody's going to have expectations of you. You don't need to be doing anything. You can just rest, do whatever you need to do to get yourself through. If you have the means to, make sure that you have got a support network of some sort. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be in person. There are so many different support groups. So having people that are experiencing the same thing that you can talk to and ask questions to and, you know, moan at is really, really helpful. It's a difficult time for you psychologically and taking care of yourself is the primary important thing. 
as a byproduct, you're going to be more well, you are going to cope better, and therefore your ability to, to help your family will also improve. When I finished chemo, yes, it was great, and I knew, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna feel that bad anymore, which was fantastic. Obviously, I went on and I had surgery after that, and then I had radiotherapy, but for me, they were really quite easy compared to chemotherapy. Um, so for me, it was like, okay, the hard bit's done now. I've got so much more energy now than when I was having active treatment, absolutely. And it's the best feeling in the world, walking away from here knowing I haven't got to have any more, is yeah, it's the best feeling.